Uh, I'm back with Trayvon here, by the way. Uh, he's just showing me some of the comprehensive rollout techniques he's using. Uh, these are things that I taught him back in the day anyway, so I want to make sure he's staying calm or he's staying on top of some of those habitual rollout techniques that we taught him beforehand. And as you can see, he's still using these to some degree. We're probably going to get more specific with some of the rollouts that we'll look at, but he's on the right track because he's still hitting those trigger points. Those are those insertion points where he's going to receive the information and allow for more suppleness or tissue activation in those particular areas that they insert. This is usually a little bit more efficient than said soft tissue rollouts, but unfortunately for what he's dealing with, there will actually have to be a collection of some trigger point exercises or rollout techniques, and then on top of that, some soft tissue releases as well. But I think he'll be able to get away with doing a little bit less of the rollout and more just getting into integrated or trolled articular rotations, maybe some tails and rails, and just some dynamic um, movement screens or dynamic mobility drills prior to introducing impact. As you can see, he's definitely learned a lot of the strategies. This is a really good one in particular for saving time and releasing the internal, external components of the thighs. And as you can see, he has a ball underneath there, which allows him to release the IQ band. Because he is dealing with a little bit of IQ band issues, tightness uh, kind of creeping up in there. And that's more or less from his job. He said he was driving in a truck for long periods of time in a seated profile. And a lot of us being at home for long periods of time are dealing with this problem too. Okay, we're seated for long periods of time. So the junction and the connections in here, that connecting to here was connecting to here, are all just getting compressed and tight. And then we're asking them to kind of move out of that position or that comprehensive tightness or um, you know, compression with speed and velocity when they're just not quite ready for it. And then you add the component of stress in there, oh boy. We're in trouble okay so we're definitely looking at some of these comprehensive rollouts to help relieve so you're on the right track um what was one that i taught you beforehand in particular for the hamstring attachment a lot of people do this particular rollout the ball right so i got a chair here maybe we can do this with the chair yeah because i you have to have like a good stool yeah no doubt so we'll just even remove this bad boy hopefully Trayvon's big stature. How much are you weighing in at these days? I haven't weighed myself, actually. Trayvon's some lean, lean cuisine, so it shouldn't be too bad, right? This chair is just kind of flimsy. Anyways, uh, this is kind of how you want to look at releasing your hamstring, simply because when we get on rollers like this, it does something, but it's just simply not enough. These compressive forces need to be under more tension or more pressure, so using an edge of a bench of some sort make a big difference on releasing those attachments that end up into actually the gluteal fold, okay, and then into the attachment of the hamstring. That attaches into here, which is attaching into some of those tight components he described before. So he doesn't have to do this every single time he works out, but as he's been working out through some of these areas and he feels them getting tight, and in turn maybe some of his posture ends up in here, he can spend some time every second day or after a workout doing some of these release techniques. Again, a lot better than that. Typical quick roll up people do for the back of their hamstrings. Just mashing it. It doesn't really do much. There's just not enough pressure there and you have to get dynamic with the release technique. Mm -hmm. This just simply needs those tissues. Now, if it was a supple tissue and you just needed a little bit extra string, you know, it, and you need a roller like this as well. A flat flush roller wouldn't really do much. Yeah. Foam roller at the gym is not gonna do much for something like this. This in particular though with the needs can help a lot, but simply, but there's just a lot better exercises you can do than just a quick back roll out of the hamstring. Not enough pressure. It's so bad, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and then like while you're doing that, if you remember correctly, when you're into the, the certain components there, if you want to do that again, I'd pin that sucker, okay? What's the goal here? The goal is to create space into those sections and help them kind of expand properly. So they're not so stringy and taut, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're getting into that component, try to reach that leg up as straight as you can handle. And if you can, try to reach to your toe. And then release it, and then bring it back in and do it again. Because the whole point is to get those tissues to go from this position to relaxation, okay? Because we want to get the end range of motion back as much as possible in a passive but also an active way. Like if you're into that extreme position, it's not gonna rip the tissues. In fact, it's just gonna respond and give you that elasticity you need. So we have to reestablish that. You're not going to get it from just simply um, 
getting there really quickly with mm -hmm. high velocity. That's more or less why these injuries occur. They've been so tight and restricted. Then all of a sudden, drastically, you get them into this extreme position with velocity and speed, and then the body's, whoa, that's too much. Snap. Yeah, it snaps. And then everything gets tight. It's a defense mechanism. So that's how you could expand that said, you know, soft tissue release, and no doubt he's been sitting for a long period of time, so this is a good one for him. Um, so that's a good look. Let's actually finish off with this last one I was going to show you. Have you been releasing your glute lead? Not as much. Okay, so we'll take the ball here. So, and this is whatever you can handle. I mean, you can use a roller like this, but you're better off using a ball of some sort. Excuse me, I'm just going to move my phone. Whatever you can handle, of course. I could place this here and start with just a linear position. Okay, where I'm in a front profile, there is some pressure underneath that and I'm releasing it. But if I can handle more, which I typically want to be able to get to at some point, I'm side profile. I mean, side. yeah, lying down or yes, completely side profile. Is that where you're gonna actually press down on the tissues that are getting taut? Yeah. And that, is that the peak, right? Like Yeah, the... peak, you can start there, you get in the glute med. Like if we show here, this is kind of like this position here. I could spend time in all these sections and yes, into that attachment near the SI, QL, lower back attachment, near your pelvis, right? Your rear pelvis position. So anyways, I'm getting into that section, and I'm trying to dynamically release it to whatever I can handle. Okay? So promoting the movement. Right, promoting the movement, but you gotta go to what you can handle, because this may be really tight, so maybe you just sit there for a bit. The goal eventually, though, is to earn external rotation. That's where the tension of those said tissues are really being pressed into the ball and the spherical zone of the ball actually helps us a lot it gets between the tissues yeah, similar like fingers pushes it out. yeah exactly same with the fingers why it's better to use a ball um obviously if you needed a regression then yes you could go to a roller and cross one leg on top and just work those tissues here where there's a little bit less pressure and a little bit less tension or top you know, I guess manipulation mm -hmm. or compressive, um, I guess, stripping of the said muscle tissue, yes? So that would be a regression, but if you can handle here, let's try the ball position. Making the most of those at-home workouts, people. Not every day has to be hardcore intensive Movement, comprehensive movements where you're getting your sweat on. I know we like to do that because our goals are fat loss and uh, keeping our, our cardio together, keeping our fitness. But part of fitness is recovery and maintenance. So you could spend, you know, three to five minutes before a workout program doing some of these. You don't have to do all of them. And then on a rest day, again, you want to get more in depth with some of this volume work for releasing the tissues with issues or the tissues that are under comprehensive comprehensive compression and tightness from the seated profile. How's that feeling? It's good. Yeah. And you go to whatever capacity it is. Essentially, you want to freestyle this release. Um, you go to whatever you can handle. He's obviously getting some pain from that because he said he's having all that referral pain around this groin area. So no doubt at his glutes probably a little on fire. So he would just take his time easing into this. The whole point of these roll-up techniques is after that he's breathing, is to allow the tissues to go from that tight top space to a relaxation position. We have to earn that, we have to get there in order to now change those tissues. If you want to reintroduce some tightness, some tension, some stability, or some explosiveness, don't put it under that tension point when it's under too much tension, because that's where you end up with rips and pops and falls and injury. So we have to respect that cycle, the comprehensive cycle, and it's how you cycle it in that matters first. I would always suggest doing this off the hop. First thing you're going to look at is the rollouts of the tissues with issues. Okay, so stay tuned for the actual exercises. We'll get into that in the you know, follow-up videos.